Hi guys, OB Dave here. And I am Ash. Together we are OB Dave and I am Ash. Yeah. Uh, nothing else to say about that. No, Dave says he's eaten too much chocolate, but I could totally eat more. It is Easter, Good Friday, so happy Easter to everyone. Yeah. And uh, I intend to eat my weight in chocolate this weekend because Dave and I are talking about cutting out the sugar and going to the gym on Monday, April Fool's Day. I know. Back at the gym. Well, do you know that April Keto Fool's... again. Yes. Well, do you know that April Fool's Day is my 20-year anniversary of living in this country? And it's been nothing but a joke ever since. And exactly. Joke's on me. <laughs> at least the weather's better. The first time we arrived here, landed in Ga- London Gatwick at like half six in the morning, it was sleeting. And I had never seen sleep. I didn't even know what it was. And I remember like the customs officer at the airport asking me to like take some layers of clothes off because they couldn't see my face. And I was like, mm-mm, mm-mm, I'm African. <laughs> this is freezing. <laughs> and then now just because we've not had the heating on all morning, I'm freezing. I know. I'm I'm sneezing and everything. I'm wearing shorts though. You are wearing shorts. And anyway. No, oh, you are wearing socks. Look at the top comment of this video. Gotta love... All Billy Paprika pubes over here. Paprika pubes? <laughs> Are you Paprika pubes? I guess so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a thing with Bill Burr that he's, there's all these names for him, like Billy Redbush and <laughs> like just, he leans into it. I think he loves the fact that people call him stuff like that. Well, it's like you said, you kind of just grew up and got thick skin over the ginger thing now. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of low-hanging fruit kind of comedy, though, isn't it? I mean, there's so much more that people can Kids are savages, and they'll always find something yeah, different. Yeah, but not when you're an kids. adult, like, going on about being a ginger. It's like, it, yeah, when your kids it, and it, teenagers. Yeah, I will say, when, you, when you're sort of a grown-up and someone won't let it go, you're a bit like... Really? There's just funnier things to say. It's yeah. kind of easy. It's like the elephant in the room, and you just go, oh, that thing. And you're like, yeah, oh, come on, mate. Yeah, you know, on. Just, like, try a bit harder. I know, right? Anyway, not pointed at anyone in particular. <laughs> uh, what, my brother? No, 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 no He's no, made a no. couple of those jokes, hasn't he? No, there's lots of people who do it. It's fine. I know. It's fine. I know, it's, it's fine. fine. Uh, right then, this is me yes. carrying on indoctrinating Ash into the uh, cult of Bill Burr. He's trying. And I will admit the podcast put him in a much better light. And I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just a stage persona I don't like. Someone put in the comments is because it's jokes about women. It's not. I was raised by my dad and all he ever did was dad jo- like dad women jokes. And yeah, I find them hilarious. Your dad's a bit more straight up and normal. Like he, he yeah. wouldn't say offensive things like Bill Burr level of, of No, no. But he's like old school gentleman kind of guy. Yeah, like yeah. he still yeah. will stop and open the door for me and make sure like I'm okay. <laughs> so... Super well, old this school. is me. I've not seen this yet either. And it's, have you ever seen when celebrities answer the internet? I think I've seen like when, I've only seen a couple where they have like the hold of the boards and yeah. it's like the most searched and they peel That's off. That's what this is. Oh, is this what it is? Yeah, I saw yeah. the one with Daniel Radcliffe and I think I saw one with uh, Chris Evans who plays uh, Captain America. Yeah. So, so that, that's what I've this is, couple. but it's Bill Burr doing Ooh, it. And okay. I am hoping that you get to see a bit more of the softer guy that Bill Burr actually kind of is, even though he's an angry, like, you know. Lunatic. I, I relate to him a lot. And I'm not just saying that because he's one of my favourite comics. There's okay. A, there's a lot of things he says where I'm like, I feel like that. Okay. I feel like that loads of the time. Okay. So I sort of, that's one of the reasons I like him so much. Fair enough. Let's yeah, do it. Let's do it then. Bill Burr answers the web's most searched questions. Ooh, what are you doing? Let's try that again. No. What are you doing? There we go. Hey. <laughs> Let's do it. Bill Burr answers the internet's most searched questions. Okay. Or Billy Big Bollocks. Hello, I'm Bill Burr, and this is the Wired Autocomplete interview. You know, all my favorite things when they say, you know, he has offbeat good looks. That means if you weren't famous, you'd be ugly. <laughs> okay. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh. What is Bill Burr's best special? This is like saying, which child do you like the most? Sophie's Choice. I love Paper Tiger because I was in England and I loved the challenge of that. And I loved Red Rocks because it wasn't even what I did, it was the crowd. And what I loved was how it was mic'd, you could hear the crowd. And if you can get through my jokes on the special, just listen to the audience. I just, I would just say some, every once in a while I would say something really random and stupid. 
and people would laugh at the ridiculousness of it. But you always hear like one guy just go like, yeah, <laughs> it wasn't a joke. It's just like, yeah, that's, that's what I, I, I think that too. That makes sense to me. What episodes Bill Burr Breaking Bad? I did the car wash one first. Then yeah. I did the one with Lavelle Crawford where the guy drops the oranges and bangs his head. And I got to be in uh, Saul Goodman's office, which was crazy, because I was such a, an insane fan of that show. I probably got in, I think, two, three seasons in, and I remember going in to Saul Goodman's office where he had the injustice for all, whatever he had, we the people of the Constitution thing above his desk. I felt like I got sucked into my TV. It was incredible. And I did the train robbery, and I got to drive that, that, that big dump truck. And I remember the stunt guy was like nervous, going like, well, you don't know what you're doing. I go, well, I'm only going half a mile an hour. I just let the clutch out and give it gas. I was young, I didn't know what I was doing. I don't know if I answered your question. I mean, I'm sure it's on IMDB. Like I'm on your secretary. What made Bill Burr famous? <laughs> what made Bill Burr famous? What made me famous? 30 years on the road, seven specials. I mean, I was definitely a ham and egger. I was not, uh, so you can see, blessed in the looks department. You know what's funny? I did a movie one time and we were shooting outside and on like three different occasions on that shoot, someone would drive by and be like, hey, Bill Burr, go fuck yourself. And I'd be like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> what helicopter does... That's another one of the things where people tell him to go fuck himself. That's and amazing. Like, at the end of his podcast, he'd be like, yeah, go fuck yourselves. So that's the thing. So for people who don't know that, if he's on a film set and people are driving past going, hey, Bill, go fuck, fuck yourself. Oh, it's going to look like people hate him, isn't it? I get that. I get that. Fair yeah. enough. Does Bill Burr fly? Like most people who learn to fly helicopters, I started off with Robinsons and then I wanted to move up and I was just like, these things are expensive as hell. And um, fortunately, there's this company called uh, Cabri that makes the gimbal Cabri G2 for all you Non-helicopter pilots, it's a three-bladed system. It's a, ba a baby A-star, which is what the police and uh, news people fly. I've flown a bunch of, I've rented them and stuff like that, the bigger ones. And I just find like a little two-seater. So it's funny, whenever I fly a bigger one, I'm always paranoid that the door is open because I'm used to the, like the door touching me as I'm sitting there flying. What is Bill Burr like in real life? I am an inquisitive person. I try to stay just ahead of my depression. And if I'm learning something new, it's exciting, it's challenging, it's embarrassing because I'm making mistakes, but I don't have to listen to the demons. It shuts them up, okay? They start talking around 11, 15, 11, 16 every night. Jesus. And that's when the booze used to come. Not anymore, though. Next one. There we go. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. Oh, dear. That's quite an insight into his mind. Yeah, absolutely. And, like, he, he did used to be a bit of a drinker and uh, not an alky. But a drinker, like probably in the same level that I'm a drinker, but he's out on the road, comedy clubs and stuff like that. You've got more of an opportunity for it. Yeah, it's true. But then he's like all about his wife and kids and stuff. That's nice. I think his vice is cigars, but even that he's like not doing loads of, which That's I like cool. a cigar too. To yeah, you do, yeah. Did you get paid as like a hand model like back in the day? <laughs> when is Bill Burr going to shut up? No. When is Bill Burr going on tour? Great question. I just started up my umpteen thousandth tour this year. And this is my favorite hour and a half that I've been doing on stage. I'm getting ready to do a special. It's an uh, unbelievable amount of fun to be on the road right now because there's so much serious stuff going on. People need to laugh and they need something silly. Actually, if there's any comedians watching, if you're feeling the gloom that most of us feel, go on stage and just try to be a little silly. It actually makes, it makes you lighter. I can't explain it. When did Bill Burr move to LA? I moved here with my lovely wife in uh, two, September 2007. And wow. two weeks later, I bought a Prius. I just went all in. <laughs> when did Bill Burr start comedy? I started comedy in uh, March of 1992, 32 years ago. I started at Nick's Comedy Stop. I started in Boston. I've always believed that I have lived a charmed life because what are the odds that I wanted to be a stand-up comedian and I was living in Boston? The greatest stand-up comedy scene in the country, I feel, and they, it just had absolute murderer's row of headlining comics there that you could learn from. Kevin Knox, Frank Santarelli, Steve Sweeney, Don Gavin, Tony V, Bob Seibel, Rich Sicer, all of these guys. They all had their different own styles. Kenny Rogerson, Mike Donovan, one of the best things about starting off in Boston was 
you knew what killing was. Where I went down to this tri-state area and I saw some of those city comics and people like that. They, oh, dude, I slayed, I killed. And I remember thinking like, I mean, you had a good set. I, I wouldn't say you killed. You weren't Noxie Tuesday night at Nick's Comedy Stop killing. All right. Here we go. How did Bill Burr end up on The Mandalorian? I ended up on The Mandalorian uh, through John Favreau, who uh, listened to my... Have you watched The Mandalorian? I've watched up to, I think... Because you're a nerd, aren't you? All right. I watched up until, I think, about season three or... F yeah, I think season three. Is it season three? I watched up to a point, and then obviously I got annoyed that Disney put their prices up and I stopped watching... But I am desperate to rewatch it. And also, like, obviously with the new, um, obviously Deadpool coming out, a lot of people have said that the Loki series is really important for context. I know you won't care. I hate stuff like that. But I, I, I will care. If I, if I watch a movie, I want to watch a movie. I don't mind there being movies before it. Yeah. But if you've got to understand so much of the lore and you've got to watch a series and blah, blah, it's just, nah, I, I, it puts me off. puts me off big time. See, I love things like that. But yes, I need to catch up. So now that I'm living here and you've got Disney, I'm going to be catching up. Do you recognise Bill Burr from it? I feel like I do recognise him, actually. I think there was a point, as soon as he said it, I was like, oh my God, he is. And I do recognise him more and more the, th the time I think about it. I've seen a clip of him with Baby Yoda. Mm. But obviously, I've not watched it. I don't know the context. It was just him and Baby Yoda. It's such a good series. Podcast. Used to always hear me making fun of Star Wars and thought it was funny. My party in uh, through John Favreau, who uh, listened to my podcast. Used to always hear me making fun of Star Wars and thought it was funny. Ended up meeting him at a mutual friend's birthday party. He goes, you know, there's a part in there that we're writing right now and we think you would be good for it. And I was like, you know, John, I, I gotta be honest with you. I always kind of make fun of Star Wars. Not in a malicious way. It's just, I just see people really enjoying something and I just know, well, that's an easy hit. If I make fun of it, I can really just watch them get upset. And, you know, it fills up my day for whatever reason. He goes, no, no. He goes, I know, I, I've heard it. I think it's hilarious. I think your fans would think it was funny if you were on this show. By then, you know, my better half, Nia, was kicking me under the table. And I was like, all right, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So I get down there. And the first scene I'm doing, I'm in a spaceship. And I'm the only guy that looks like a person. Everybody else has all this this crazy makeup on. Yeah, and I'm that. sitting in there. And I literally feel like I'm in the Muppets Take Manhattan. So we're going to rehearse the scene. And I'm trying not to laugh. The actors were so amazing. I immediately, that all went away. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to get my ass kicked in this and I was totally locked in, and I ended up having a great time. John showed me a trailer of the first season of The Mandalorian. My jaw was on the ground because it was like a spaghetti western. It would look like Clint Eastwood was doing Star Wars, and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I almost stuck my foot in my mouth and didn't get in this. And it's one of the, my favorite things I've ever done in my career, and I will say Star Wars fans are cool as hell. Okay. Yeah, we are. There we go. Is... I'm getting a little defensive. Is Bill going to... I think anyone that... Like, it's no secret that nerds and stuff like that are generally the nice people. Yeah. That I don't think that's ever been in Cause, question. Because like, we live on the basis that, you know, good always conquers evil. And where there is evil, there's always good and there's heroes. And there's... family, you know, and supporting your community and your, your fellow man and the underdog. I, I don't know what it's like nowadays, but when I was in high school, like the nerds hung out with us, the metalheads and the skateboarders and stuff like that. Yeah. Because it was everyone that wasn't didn't necessarily fit into the way high school was done all ended up together. So a lot of my mates were like into Warhammer and painting figures and That's cool. Star Wars and things like that. It was just, I just can't get into Star Wars. I've tried. I don't like space stuff, really. I'll try The Mandalorian. I've heard it's great. But you, when it's like pew, pew. But it's not going to make sense unless you've seen all the Star Wars. Some of it. There is parts where you do need to have watched Star Wars to get some of the references. And also, we need to watch Firefly. You see, it just hit me. <laughs> Smacked me on the chin. You were right. No, I'm not. What is we it? Need, what is it? We need to watch help. Firefly. Send help. Get off me. I'm going to wrap this up. Is Bill ever going to get a hair system? Is Bill ever going to admit that it's not us, it's him? Is Bill Burr a Patriots fan? Yes, absolutely. All the way back to Jim Plunkett. I love the Patriots, whether they're good or bad. And I actually really enjoy how much fans are giving me a rough time right now because the Patriots aren't good. Because all I hear is we're so relieved that you're not kicking our ass anymore. Is Bill Burr a drummer? 
That's debatable. I play drums. I always say uh, I'm a guitar center drummer. I'm a dad drummer. You know what I mean? If you need like a cover, I can do a decent cover. I could be in a wedding band, but an actual drummer, like, uh, you know, somebody comes in with a riff, you have to come up with the drum part that fits that and not only complements it, hopefully elevates it. That's a musician. Is Bill Burr in Reservation Dogs? Yes, I am. I play uh, Coach Bobson. They actually um, asked me to come back a second time, but unfortunately I was editing a movie I did called Old Dads, so I didn't get to do it and it's, it kills me because they wrapped up that show. They were building something and uh, the people I worked with on that, you know. Don't, don't listen to these people that talk about Holly. There's a lot of great people in this business. All right, is Bill Burr it's nice to hear him say that because all you hear nowadays is like Hollywood elites yeah. eat children and, and you know, all like, this, yeah, and bad and it's, people. It's all just like Epstein's mates. Underground and, rings and yeah. yeah. So it's nice to hear that instead of picking on the minority, think about the majority and it's just a whole I'm bunch sure, of good people just yeah, doing their job. I'm sure it is absolutely full of scumbags. Sure. So, you know, there's lots of money being thrown around. But that's you know, in every industry. Everyone that it, is minority is scumbag. It's probably just exacerbated by the fact that there's so much money and there's so much ego involved and narcissism in acting. Oh, yeah. And easy to, like, coerce and convince people because, oh, well, I've got the power yeah, of Casting this. couches and stuff. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, he's like, Bill Burr's sort of the everyman. So for him to be in Hollywood, he's kind of like, you feel like there's a normal guy there. And if he's saying some people are all right, yeah, kind of, you know, tend to believe in me. Yeah, I do, yeah. I do, anyway. These people that talk about Holly. There's a lot of great people in this business. All right. Is Bill Burr nice? Am I nice? You would have to ask other people. I try to be nice. All right. Is Bill Burr political? I don't watch CNN. I don't watch Fox News. I don't pay attention to elections. However, I'm more interested on what corporations are doing and what they're getting away with and why people are allowing it and why, if you're running for office, if you start to say that that's what they're doing, they just tar and feather you. I like what's behind it is kind of what uh, fascinates me. Does Bill Burr go to therapy? Yeah. I haven't in a while. I will say that the biggest biggest change for me is I, I took mushrooms. What I love about that drug is it doesn't make you want to do more. It makes you want to deal with your life. Bill Burr, Bill Hader. Oh, to choose between the two? I mean, that's a no-brainer. You gotta go Bill Hader all day. Bill Hader is arguably the greatest impressionist I've ever seen. I fucking love Bill Hader. And the fact that you would even have my name next to his and the directing and the writing that he did on Barry. Bill Hader is like ridiculously underappreciated by all those, those foofy award shows. It's ridiculous. This guy's a monster talent. And I think it's time he gets his goddamn hardware. What do you think of that? Does Bill Burr start on time? Usually not, because we have to have yonder bags, and that's your guy's fault. Because you fucking assholes, every five seconds you gotta sit there and film, oh my God, what's my life right now? And then you edit it like CNN and Fox News to make me look as bad as possible to try to get me in trouble so you can get some more friends. I was here on time, right? I am on time, all right? I don't know how that yonder shit works. Did Bill Burr? Do you know what a yonder bag is? No. So a lot of the big comics now, they've invested quite a lot of money in these bags that that get sealed shut when you go in. And when you go and check your coat or whatever going into the comedy show, you've got to put your phone in a yonder bag that gets zipped up. And it's kind of like a Faraday sort of thing. So it's like, I think it deprives your phone of signal and stuff as well. Okay. And uh, it's sealed. You get to keep your phone in the bag. And then when you leave the place, they unlock the bag for right. you and give you your phone back. Because there's so many people recording comedians well, doing yeah, sets. Well, yeah, it's also, it's just like, it's, you know, people upload these and it's just like, you ruin it for people who bought tickets to see this. Yeah. And it's but, like how we talked about this at uh, Doug Stanhope, didn't we? And we were like, yeah. even though we filmed going in and we filmed, you know, like the little scenery around it. And I put my phone down the side and I filmed us laughing that's all we film. used in the video. That was it. it. Just a bit of laughter. We didn't use anything. He Nothing said. else. And it's it's respect for other people yeah. who are fans, and it's also respect for the guy who's working. It's his well, livelihood. The thing is, what a comedian puts out as a special is what they're happy to go out to the world. Yeah. When a comedian's at a club on a Tuesday night trying to work out the bits and try and make something funny out of a premise, exactly. It, and there's a famous clips it, yeah. a famous one happened to Louis C.K. a couple of years ago to do with a, a school shooting. Oh yeah. And. Um, 
his joke, it was funny, but it wasn't polished yet. And someone leaked it and he got in a lot of trouble for it. But it's like, I'm at a club just working it out and someone's recorded it and released Edited it on it YouTube. In a certain way, yeah. They didn't edit it. It just, it wasn't finished. Mm. He's, you've got to work it out in front of a crowd to, to figure it out. Yeah, see how people react, I guess. Yeah, it's why a lot of comedians record their special at the end of a tour. Because they've had a whole tour to just tweak. tweak jokes slightly and change Makes one sense. word to another. And... Okay, fair yeah. enough. For right F is for family. I wrote on it. I co-created the show with the great Mike Price. Michael was the captain of the ship. It was a big writer's room. There was 10 people in the room, including myself. And that's another question people have, you know, is my dad like Frank? Frank was an amalgam of all of our dads. And I actually think towards the end, he was more me than anything. <laughs> Bill Burr, Adam Sandler. This is about that movie, Leo. I am blown away by, first of all, how great the writing was on it, how cool Adam was to work with. I did get to get in the booth with him a couple of times. He's widely regarded out here as just the nicest guy. And he literally is that guy. Shows up basketball shorts, big hoodie. Ah, oh, what's going on? You know, he's just awesome. I made him laugh a couple times, which was like the biggest thrill of my life. But the big thing about that movie that I love is the amount of kids of all ages and parents that have come up to me and said how much they related to it, which I really think is a testament to everyone that wrote. The writing on it was just next level. Bill Burr, next one. Best stand-up. I have ones that I like for a personal reason, and somebody brought this one up. I did this bit um, on some benefit. Steve Jobs has died, and I did a bit making fun of him. It was something about how they said he changed the world. It was basically making fun of how he took credit for everything. And it's not on any of my specials, it's not on any albums or CDs. And I remember doing it and knowing that it was only gonna be there. I didn't save it for a special and that it would be this cool thing. And then I also loved it because it was a really rich crowd. They were like auctioning off guitars and people paying like six figures for them. So I felt like their reaction, the way I was making fun of them, was like they actually knew the guy, which made it even more enjoyable to do the bit. <laughs> Who is Bill Burr's opener? When you go to see me live, I don't bring cupcakes on the road. I'm not looking for a career opener. Everybody that's open for me has gone on to headline and crush it. Paul Verzi, who just shot a special. He used to open for me. He hasn't opened for me now in like six years. We still work a couple of times a year together. Joe Bartnick's another guy that moved on. Joey B. And right now I've been working with Dean Del Rey, Bianca Cristoval, and uh, Nate Craig. There's an energy you put out as a comedian when you're doing new stuff. There's an excitement, you're present and all of that, and it's contagious. And when I watch them trying out new stuff, you know, I don't want to be the dud, you know, on the show. I, I want to do something too. So like, I, I think it's really important to bring somebody that you believe can make it. Um, all right, Bill Burr. Let's see here. Bill Burr, Elvis. He was the first, I feel like, post-television superstar and had to deal with a level of fame where there was no roadmap. He's the original behind the music. And if you look, he made every fucking mistake. <laughs> Surrounded himself with yes men, did drugs, married a 16 year old. I mean, he just did everything. I don't wanna get into this too much, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Died alone on a toilet. Bill Burr, Fenway. That was something that was so big, I think I only recently thought about it. I'll never forget just being on stage and seeing Fenway Park, because we were out in center field. My family, we used to always sit out in right field. It was a great time. And uh, to be able to come back all of those years later, to get that kind of love from my home city was incredible. And it's not something that I will uh, ever forget. Those questions all seemed like they were from fans. I'm surprised it wasn't meaner. <laughs> That was really good. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Quite an insight into him as a person. He's still an angry man. <laughs> oh, cool. I, he'll be the first to admit he's, you know, anger, management issues, depressed a lot of the time. Yeah. Like, and I think that's why he throws himself into his family and his hobbies so much. Cause I get he just, that. Like, he's figured out, focus on the important things in he's life. He's had quite the demons, has not it? Yeah. So I get that. I mean, I'd say I'd probably, I'm probably an angry person. I come across as positive and happy, but... Deep down, I'm an angry ball of fur. <laughs> I don't think you're that bad. No, maybe not. And if you were ginger, it'd be a nightmare, though. I am part ginger. I told you half my family are ginger. That doesn't make you part ginger. Yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. 
I How does that make you part ginger? Because you're related to a ginger. Who, like, well, You've got a ginger, ginger boyfriend. That doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't make you part ginger. It's like me saying I'm part brunette. Well, you are, aren't you? No. Your dad's... No, your I'm dad's ginger. Mean, what are you on about? I, I, I don't know. Part ginger. You know which part. Uh, right then. <laughs> <laughs> that is, uh, like I said at the beginning, me sort of uh, getting asked to come round to who Bill Burr actually is, which I think is an important precursor to us watching Always Sunny in Philadelphia on Patreon. We're doing full watch along soon. The reason being, they're awful people. Their characters are the worst people in the world. That's the funny bit. The characters are so bad and they're such awful people. But in a way, you sort of bond with them over time. And it's not justifying their shitty things that they do to people. But you can what you can enjoy a bad guy and you can enjoy a character that's less than savoury. Okay. Because that's what, I hated Always Sunny in Philadelphia the first time I watched it because I was like, who are these knobheads and why would I want to watch them? Fair enough. And then it, it, a couple of years later, I tried it again and... You just you. I watched it from a different lens. Okay, and that's what I'm trying to show you with Bill Burr a little bit. If you just, I, I think it's like we said, and I said at the beginning of the video. I think it is just his stage like persona, and then like the odd time, like he made a comment in that, and he's just like, I just like. It's almost like he likes to cause argument. He wants people to be irritated by what he says, and that's what yeah. I don't like about it. Yeah, but it's then, he, like, but then he said, you know, and you know, I wonder where that comes from. In other words, like. That's probably something he's talked about in therapy quite a lot. Probably. And he, he talks quite openly about his upbringing and things yeah. like that. And it's like, you know, he knows he's compensating Fair for things. Enough. He knows what he's doing, but it doesn't mean he doesn't enjoy it sometimes. No, that's what I mean. It's the enjoyment part. <laughs> anyway. Suspend belief when we watch Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I will. Because they are bad people. <laughs> They're bad, bad people. But it just makes for great content. That's okay. All. Yeah, right then. I hope you guys enjoyed that too. As always, make sure to like and subscribe. We will do the Philly rant soon, don't worry. And uh, we'll see you soon. Bye, guys. <laughs>